Thank you for joining us. We're here now with Kevin Layton Brown, who's a professor at the University of British Columbia and a Canada CIFAR AI Chair at AMI. Kevin works at the intersection of AI, optimization, and strategic behavior. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Kevin, I wanted to start by asking you, what's one question that you wish people would ask you about your research? I wish people would ask me how game theory differs from game design because people often confuse these things. And there's obviously a lot of theory that goes into game design, but game theory means something really specific. It means thinking about how rational agents um, reason uh, about each other and what kind of behavior you should expect in a system that contains two or more such rational agents. So in the kind of game design context, this could go from um, trying to do better player modeling, trying to understand the kinds of things that players would do in a multiplayer game to more explicitly kind of anticipating the ways that uh, multiplayer interactions would involve competition or cooperation, which kinds of behaviors to expect. It can also involve some kind of offline analysis, like thinking about monetization strategies and sort of counterfactually, if I was to change something about the way that I charge people for the interactions they participate in, how they might uh, avail themselves of those opportunities or not. So moving into some of your research interests, can you, can you tell us a little bit about uh, kind of what you're working on and what you're interested in? So a big part of what I do is, is this kind of machine learning for thinking about game theory. So I think about not just taking the kind of abstract analytical approach of, of game theory that was introduced in the 50s in economics, but trying instead really to think about looking at data about how actual people behave and using that data to build uh, models that can be used beyond the training data to, to predict human behavior. And then try to leverage these kinds of models to think about market design in particular. So designing interactions between people to achieve a good social outcome, whether that outcome is more revenue uh, in an auction or it's uh, like a beneficial um, social outcome in a government procurement auction or a, a radio spectrum allocation or something like that. Uh, finally, I, I also do something completely different, which is using machine learning to design better optimization algorithms. Um, this is important in market design because optimization algorithms are often at the core of an auction, uh, but it also has a lot of applications beyond that. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about this uh, algorithmic algorithm design that you're working on? Yeah, so, so it turns out that computer science theory, we know that there are a lot of hard problems called NP-complete problems that we don't expect that it's possible to build an algorithm that would work well in the worst case. So what people tend to do is to find heuristics or rules of thumb that work well on the kinds of data that they actually experience. Right now, this tends to be a very manual process where people kind of introspect about the kinds of heuristics that would work well or look to the literature. I'm trying to use machine learning to change that, to learn from the kinds of problems that we've seen before and use that to adaptively change the way an algorithm behaves so that it achieves better performance. So can you maybe tell us about some of the ways that uh, this kind of work would be useful or, or used out in, the, out in the world? I mean, if you were a, a game design company and you were using a, a search algorithm to, uh, to solve a path planning problem, for example, then you, you might face a whole lot of path planning problems that look very similar. They depend on the kind of map topologies that you actually have and the kind of algorithm you have and the number of things that have to move around. It might be that if you looked at a lot of data about how uh, all of these different path planning problems are, are specifically structured, um, you know, different configurations of your path planning algorithm would work better for your particular game than kind of the generic setting. And you, you could actually use this to, to achieve better performance. It also works for kind of offline optimization problems like the analysis of a social network or the economic analysis of a monetization scheme or something like that, where again, you might have many examples of an optimization problem that sort of implicitly come from some distribution and you want to build an algorithm that works well on that distribution. Thanks so much for sharing all that with us. It sounds like there's a lot to unpack there. I wish we could have more time to chat, uh, but thanks so much for, for sharing your insights with us today, Kevin. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me.